Hello, everybody, one million meditators community. Thank you so much for being here with us. I have the pleasure of interviewing Jill Marie Jordan today. She is a sound therapist, an author, and the producer of Movement for Peace. Hi, Jill. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Anita. Jill. As we decided, we I haven't sent you any questions. So this is a conversation between two friends in in your living room in my office. So I I want you to just share your beautiful movement and your journey with meditation and how you got into sound therapy and most of all how how does sound help us raise consciousness uh, help humanity and heal ourselves and the planet wow yes thank you all great questions and um, I started getting into this work, into meditation, to, to create peace in my own life, to overcome a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, uh, grief, and um, physical pain, and all kinds of things that, you know, started to take me down. And I just knew that there was ways that people face difficult situations, and they overcome it. And they not only overcome, but they become successful and have a loving life. And I wanted to learn how to do that. I didn't have that example in my family growing up. But um, I knew there was a way like Oprah was an example, how you know, here's that was abused all her life and and now I'm the most powerful woman on the planet helping everyone. And so I began to find ways to relax my own body, to find peace within my own body and in my mind as well. And then began to learn different types of meditation. Um, one thing that has always stood out for me is I have very sensitive sound. I have a um, what they call uh, sensory processing dysfunction, but I prefer to say that it's more of a, a gift than a disorder, which is what I've been told. But it's a part of the brain that um, affects the incoming stimuli so all of the mm -hmm. sensory stuff and for me in particular it's hearing my my hearing is super super sonic and um so what used to oh, cause well, I, uh, i'm really curious i've never heard about this so-called disorder but i've noticed that i'm very sensitive to sound too so how does it how did it manifest or how does it affect you well um what happens in the, it, when that part of the brain is overstimulated, it, well, the, the brain is receiving all the information, the sound, the tactile, taste, smell, vision, all mm -hmm. of the sensory things, and the brain's trying to process everything that's happening all at the same time. <laughs> so what can happen then is like insomnia, agitation, anxiety, um, um, attention deficit, um, mm -hmm. fatigue all of these things because the brain's constantly working too hard and so um, when I started learning about this and my daughter also um, experienced it and that's kind of how I figured out what was going on and um, so I began to learn to relax the mind and then when I went to someone else's sound healing class the first time I tried it I had to leave. It was way too much for me. And, I, and then I tried it again and I had this deep relaxation and this interdimensional shift that took me to a place of complete peace, like heaven, you know? And I thought, I, I have to learn how to do this. This this is going to have to be my job because it was the most glorious experience I've ever had in my body and, and out of my body. So, um, wow. Yeah, that's when I started. That was about in 2012. I had already been working on meditation for about 10 years uh, before that, but not getting the results that I was really hoping for um, and what I saw other people getting. So I got a crystal bowl for my own use. Yeah. Uh, it started changing my life, um, just the, the, the power of the relaxation. And then I got a couple more and then people heard about it and they wanted to come hear them. And then I started playing in public and then I thought, you know, then I was getting these spontaneous healings in these group settings where people would be like, um, you know, I've had this pain in my shoulder my whole life and it moved down my arm and out my fingers and left my body. And, um, 
elderly people, even older people there I went that couldn't move their back for many years have been to all these massage therapists and chiropractors and, you know, um, all kinds of things to heal the back. But suddenly they play the, the bowls get played for an hour and they're, they're better. So I'm relieved. Yes. And I was like, why is this happening? I mean, yes, it's fantastic, but what is going on here? And so I wanted to, so I began to research that. And there's a lot of work in the field of sound healing now. Um, you know, the big universities, Harvard, Stanford, Duke, uh, many across Europe, many others in the in America too, but they're now studying more and more of it and knowing that, um, that they're, first of all, we're all frequency, right? We're all made of energy. And so, um, you, the body wants to be in balance. And so the first thing that happens is the crystal itself is quartz, right? It's a hundred percent quartz, 99.99% quartz, the most organized structure on the planet. So this organized structure just being, um, in the room with us, our body begins to become entrained and wants to become in balance. So that starts relaxing the body, opening the, the um, channels of the body to be in more in tune. And then the sound is harmonic and it has different frequencies. It's a resonant frequency. So it's a very balanced state of frequency. And when that when our bodies get into that kind of a field, again, it begin, the body begins to heal. St cells that maybe were stuck in a stagnant um, muscle spasms, for instance, right. may begin to break apart. And that begins to happen, <clears throat> the body starts to relax. The body knows how to heal. We've just got to kind of help it to relax because we're so exposed to so many things that take the body out of balance. And it sound then helps the body get back into co coherence. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the more I learned about frequency and how this was benefiting our, our bodies and why we were healing and why we were feeling better, um, it also began to show how, you know, it balances the brain waves and it can take you deeply into a meditative state. Um, to, to stimulate that um, connection to the divine or to the universe or to the oneness of everything, that zero point field, that Akash, you know, there's multiple names for it, but it's basically that, that field that we're all in. Right. And then um, when we started the movement for peace about three years ago, you know, we incorporated the the uh, the labyrinth, which is um, an energy, you know, they walk a labyrinth and sound and um, the energy of the divine feminine also it, through Mary Magdalene. And we gathered people from all over the world to do these meditations together. And as that movement began to grow, uh, we started divinely synchronistically you know meeting more people like you and like um rory duff who is a geobiologist the planet's leading geobiologist he measures the sounds of the planet and how they affect us and um, also how we affect our planet and our you know as humans as living matter and um so then I started learning about the frequency of the planet and our frequency and how we all you know definitely play a part into that. That's why the 1 million meditators praying for loving ourselves and loving our planet is a huge and successful movement every day, every day, every day that it gets bigger, every day that someone logs on, every day that someone, you know, participates makes it is creating a healing frequency for ourselves and our planet. And that is because, yes, we're holding the same intention to feel love for ourselves and the planet during uh, 15 minutes meditations. But can you explain a little bit more for our audience how holding an intention, whether you meditate or you pray, Especially since uh, since you had um, the opportunity to to collaborate with this uh, renowned biologist, how does that actually scientifically influence the the electromagnetic vibration of the planet? Well, it's because we uh, because we are frequency and our planet um, is frequency, and there's actually certain times of the year. Next Sunday is a really big one of the one of the four biggest days of the year. So I'm glad we're doing our big, you know, stuff that day. <laughs> um, where 
that there's lines around the planet that are electromagnetic, kind of like if you imagine like a grid, a network, a, a web. Um, okay. It goes in, in the surface of the planet and just outside of it. I don't, I'm not used to this camera, but um, so on a daily basis, these lines are moving almost, almost like an expansive, almost like a, uh, almost like a lung, right? Okay. These these energy things are moving. Different times of the year, they open up and they allow more light to come in. More um, po there's there's days that we can get more positive electromagnetic rays that can help our planet, and there's some days that way we, we were not getting uh, harmonious energy in. But on those days where this uh, this grid is kind of opening up and allowing more light to come in. And we participate through a 10 minute, you know, 10, 20, 30, whatever it is, but a 10 minutes, all we really need intention of our energy in a group, especially. Um, and that we're learning a lot about that through Lynn McTaggart and mm -hmm. her intention experiments. Um, but for some, some, you know, I don't know the science as well as Rory can explain it, but our connection and our collective, um, you know, prayer to do to to create a change, it helps to heal these these parts of this grid that have been broken due to you know climate change and, and changes in the atmosphere and stuff like that. So, but when when we hold our intention in there, it actually is a way that he has shown in, in all the ways that he's done it, that it begins to repair this, um, this grid that's around the planet. So we're actually, you know, that's the power that we have to just spend 10 or 20 minutes together. Um, absolutely phenomenal. How did, the, how did the movement uh, for peace come to be? Wh whose inspiration, where did the inspiration come from? Well, it was Shannon Anderson and I, she's a friend of mine, and um, we had met a few years ago, and then we we kind of stayed in touch or whatever, and I texted her one night, and I was like, hey, did you hear about this portal opening? You know, I listen to astrology and there's stuff out there, and I was like, I'm going to take advantage of this. I don't really know if it's all real or not, but like, I like to take advantage of it if there's a possibility. She's like, I don't know, come over. So I came over, and we did some meditation, we talked, and we talked about our like life dream always wanted to help the world and, and the things that we've always wanted to do. And we've both been in the field of helping people are, you know, for our whole career, Shannon's a licensed mental health counselor. And I've worked either in the medical field or doing sound healing or life coaching. And um, so then I said, yeah, I always wanted to go to, to California and long story short, we were like, okay, you know what, let's just go, let's start some stuff on our bucket list and we'll go and why don't we do a workshop together? And then we started thinking, you know, let's just offer a free meditation. Let's offer something free that people can just come together and pray for peace. This, you know, the world needs peace. It needs divine love and nurturing. And I think people will come for this. And then we decided we're not going to just do it in California. We're going to do it globally. We're going to have people log in and just do it wherever they are in the world. No big <laughs> yeah, and it just started growing the first year. It, it took us six weeks. It was only six weeks before the date that we chose to do it. We got 44 countries. I mean, 44 locations. Yes. And countries. Yeah. And um, so we were really excited. Like, okay, people are really going to do this. And that year, everyone walked a labyrinth, even if it was on a paper labyrinth with your eye, because um, a labyrinth has a very powerful energy cycle that can help your frequency and you can feel the difference. You can, mm -hmm. start, uh, you know, a labyrinth and, and have a different <laughs> coming out. So if that started growing and then the more we learned about frequency, about collective consciousness, about collective meditation, um, I just, my, when my first degree was in film production. So I was like, we should just make a documentary explaining this because it got so complicated, but it's simple, but complicated because we got this geobiologist and all this science. And then we have our quantum physicist and, you know, I'm trying to have, wrap my head around it in a way that I can teach people like, yeah. wow, why this is working because we are all one. We are in this field and this is how the earth's frequency and this is our frequency. And so we just, I started shooting little videos and then we decided, you know, we're going to do a full feature documentary. So that will be out next year. 
and I have massive amounts of editing and it's still more to interview. So I don't have a lot of it to share right now. But you do, you do have a, a trailer that I've watched and that is on your Facebook page with yeah. in the description. So I encourage everybody to watch that trailer. You're literally going to feel your whole body buzzing. Thank you. Yeah. And there's so much more since that trailer, because that was leading up to that cosmic alignment that we in the pilgrimage that we took. And but now we have footage from Lynn McTaggart, the, the world's leading intention experiment journalist and um, scientist, and then Rory Duff, who's the geobiologist. And then we're going next month to meet um, Freddie Silva, who's an expert on sacred sites and um, crop circles and the ancient history that's been covered up and how it relates to our current consciousness. So I feel like his interview is going to kind of pull a lot of this all into, you know, a good cohesive story for us. Talking about sacred sites, you just came back, well, a few weeks back, you came back from Europe. Share what was, um, out of all the sacred sites that you visited, what was the the biggest aha or epiphany or something you feel inspired you to, to keep walking this path? Well, we went to a a chapel in the south of France called Monsons, and it is a very little known chapel. It's a Knights Templar chapel. And on the ceiling of this chapel are all these diagrams of sound frequency. Oh, I've seen the pictures, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so we spent a couple hours there. We actually got a key to it and were able to spend a couple hours there by ourselves and experience the energy. It was like, it, it was like being lifted in, 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 into the highest meditative, glorious, heavenly state, just, it, feeling so loved, feeling just uh, like high. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 only I, 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 I with my sensory stuff early in my, you know, 20s and 30s, I self-medicated with alcohol and other things to, to, <laughs> to calm my nervous system. So I know what that what it's like to be high. I haven't, I, you know, I choose now to uh, do it with my body and my mind. And, um, but this was a state beyond anything that you could get artificially and um, just a feeling of complete bliss and in the body, mind, in the heart, and just so much joy. And then we found out later that that site actually has, there's, there's um, eight main lines of, from the earth that circle the entire earth and are very powerful lines. So the, where the lines intersect that is right intersect there. That intersect yeah, there. Right at so so that was you know that's what the Templar is trying to tell us in the ceiling um, explaining the frequencies and it, it gets we'll go a little bit more into that into the in the documentary so it kind mm -hmm. of makes more sense but then we found then we went to Roslyn well we did several cathedrals throughout France and we went to Roslyn in Scotland and that too is on an intersecting line and um, they they build all these cathedrals that these lines intersect right at the altar. Mm -hmm. and they said some of these scholars that were there, they say like, um, how do they know? How do they know that that was the most focal point? Well, they, you know, they didn't have all the stuff that we have. They didn't have computers, cell phones, phones, TVs, you know, satellites, any electronics at all. They were in tune with themselves. They were in tune to the earth. Um, and the earth was in a better state then. And they had to rely on what they, you know, what they knew to, to grow crops, to be in harmony, to, so they were more in tune. And the thing is, these centers that the Knights Templar had built their um, cathedrals on, you know, eight, 900 years ago, they, those are the same sites that have been preyed upon. They were ancient Celtic um, uh, ceremonies there for Ooh. thousands of years. So these are, you know, they followed the same thing that has been, um, there's ancient circles there. And, you know, we know that there has been um, prayer and ceremony on these sites for thousands of years. So I feel like 
the, the, the people then, they were more just more in tune. And if we become more in tune, we can feel that, right? You know, we, and like when we went to Roslyn and um, we went in there to the altar and notice they call it the altar. And that is because it, be, these altars were built on these lines and it creates an altered state of consciousness. That's where that word came from, that the altar, we go to the altar and we, we connect our energy to energy that affects matter. To cosmic energy. Yes. So when we, when we bring ourselves to a state of, um, of pure love mm -hmm. and, and, and we connect with a, you know, these, these frequencies on the planet that, that in the past have created change in matter. That's why people go to these cathedrals and they come out with these miraculous healings um, or, you know, change in matter. People have levitated in Roslyn. There's no photography allowed in there, but um, our geobiologist was able to, to record some in there. So I'm hoping he's going to share some footage with me, <laughs> but um, um, yeah, well, there's sure. do you, do you feel I don't know, maybe it's just me, but and just in the last couple of months, I've uh, had the honor to meet so many uh, spiritual activists and leaders of movements like yourself. And to me, although I know the news is all bleak, but I really feel that humanity is stepping into a new era of consciousness. Is that just me or, or how do you feel about this? I completely agree with that, that, and I just said this on another interview I did yesterday was that, you know, it, people will go out there and look at the world and say, it's falling apart. It needs help. And I, you know, I'm not going to argue with that, but I don't, what I see in the world is everybody awakening. I see people coming together. I see people wanting to heal, wanting to help one another, people that are willing to give yes, just for the sake of giving. And when we look at the studies that Lynn McTaggart has done um, with what she calls the rebound effect, or um, when, when you do something <laughs> for someone else or for the world or anything without anything in return, um, just for the, the, you know, that altruistic um, intention to help someone, the rebound effect is wow. that everyone, you are participating, you get more peace, you get more love, you know, the more you give, it really is true. The more that you give, then it just comes back to you. And that's what I see in the world. Yes. Is there yeah. people that still need help and things that need changing? Yes. But the people that are waking up and wanting to give love and, and help one another is yes. bigger than it's been in thousands of years, I think. This is what I see. That's the world I live in. I can totally attest to that. And I call it the boomerang effect. Yeah. We, we, seriously, we started One Million Meditators just two years ago. We had five ambassadors, five live stream meditations. Uh, and in next week, uh, thank you for joining us. You're going to be doing yeah. your first live stream meditation as a one million meditators ambassador so in only two years we have now 100 live stream meditations yes yeah, that's so awesome. 44 ambassadors in nine languages from 13 countries it's just phenomenal like forget about the numbers but just all of these happenstance and synchronicities the way the two of us met and like right away click and now here comes the boomerang effect that i've noticed in my life uh health and abundance and and living in italy and all of these beautiful, magical, miraculous things that are happening in my own personal life. And I go like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And a friend of mine said, Anita, but you give so much. And this is the key, this is the key. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our grandparents that were so in tune with nature and loving their animals, they would first give. You would go to a market, they would first give you a taste. Taste this, taste this, and taste this. Yeah. Um, and the moment people get back to, to first giving and then asking, that's or not even asking at all, just giving, 
and the universe showers you with gifts. Yes. I am so, sorry, I get so carried away yeah, <laughs> about yeah. generosity. Yeah. So the uh, your film is coming out next year, right? Yes. But do you also do uh, sound uh, therapies um, online, or how how can uh, one million meditators, followers, viewers, listeners get in touch with you to join the movement to find out about when the film will be released, or to participate in in sound healings? Yes, so um, we have movementforpeace.net, and that's our website for the Movement for Peace. You can email me there, or we can um, also have Jill Jordan Sound Healing dot com um, and both of those are Facebook pages as well and um, so I'm starting to build the my YouTube channel so there's some sound healing stuff there and um, of course there's live events that I do all over um, so those events can be found on the Jill Jordan sound hit living page or the uh, peace movement awakening is the tag for our Facebook page mm -hmm. um, yep and um but the qu question still remains if somebody in australia or well, you're in the us i'm in canada sound sound healing is it as effective in person as over uh, some sort of media like skype or whatever I, yeah it definitely it definitely can be and it can even be from a pre-recorded you know um YouTube video or or Facebook video, um, the harmonics are still going to be encoded into the frequency, right? Of course, there are because there. Are, I remember now there are all of those solfeggio frequencies. What is the highest frequency? And obviously, they don't need to be live. You can right. have them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. I'm going to start doing some of the uh, binaural beats um, recording. Yes, with just, binaural beats. Yeah, and you wear the headphones and it creates, um, it sends a different tone into each ear so that the brain then be, um, creates the difference between the tones, which will help balance the brain and um, stimulate healing in different parts or sleep or whatever the, that video happens to be for. I read about binaural beats, but I heard that it's a very complicated technology behind. Uh, do, you, do you think so? We usually use the three one million meditators meditation tracks. Mm. Can we add binaural beats to those? Yes, I think we can. I'm just starting to learn about that, but I'll mm. I'll share with you the the sites that are looking like I'm going to be the ones. Those are going to be the ones I'm going to use to help me. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you so much. Everybody who's on this live broadcast or watching the replay, please share it on your walls and all of your social media. Let's get the word out. Let's raise consciousness and help our beautiful blue planet thrive again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. This was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can't wait to meditate with you. When is your? When are you going to stream your One Million Meditators meditation? Uh, this Saturday, the twenty-first at six thirty. Okay, so that's dedicated to International Peace Day, creating inner peace to outer peace. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, love. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. Bye.